It's showtime. Look at that. It is showtime. I shouldn't really be in charge of pastries if I can't even get the live stream plugged in mm. on time, I suppose. But uh, there we go. These are the things that happen. We are in the 5G Land Rover again. So, another fun packed week running around trying to get things done in a hurry of Wireless Wednesday. And Wireless Wednesday. we have a new connected, interestingly, um, list of items today. I don't know if anyone wants to start off with any of the particular topics. Or the one that I did like, if we start in reverse order, is the uh, apparently our smart tech is not green enough. I wonder if anybody, <laughs> no, uh, no surprise there, I don't suppose. Hmm. Um, <laughs> apparently, apparently it's, uh, it takes a huge amount of resources uh, and these resources are from places where they shouldn't be. So what can we do? Because there's then a link, obviously, to the open RAN, and we've all seen these um, in the RAN network. But what can we do to make our devices greener? And I know, obviously, people say recycle them, but beyond recycling them, which basically is kind of not really making them greener, it's making them last longer, which obviously is a fantastic way. But how do we make them greener in the first place, I suppose, is the, mm. is the key one. I mean, also, got, we've got to consider the core network. I mean, think of the data centers using you know, gazillions of, uh, you know, of megawatts of power and that sort of thing, you know, and how many there are. And, you know, right around the world, not only in the UK and Europe, but everywhere, you know, they're very data, hung very power hungry, you know. So, so it's not only the instrument themselves, it's not only what we do with them, our handsets and things like that, but it's also the core networks, isn't it? You know, the well, it is, and we will get to that. That's the, the next topics. But in terms of the handsets, yeah. the only things that I've seen, so I've, I've seen, for example, Fairphone, and I've been this close to pressing Get Fairphone. Obviously, Fairphone is Android, so for me personally, it would be my sort of second handset. My first one is an iPhone because I'm sort of tied into that ecosystem. Um, but then the other one, which I like more, and I've already had but sent back, but will probably get again, is the... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. What is the name? There's so many, You see, when you do so many things in a day... Um, oh, there you go. You completely you're, you're forget. Gonna say, you're going to say it's BlackBerry. <laughs> oh, good lord, they were. I mean, they were good for the environment, I suppose. Yeah. In that uh, they didn't really have very much. Uh, let's leave that alone. But the yeah. uh, the fantastic phones that are made in the UK. Carl is the CEO. Carl with a C, not a K. The uh, the guy who was uh, the head guy. Oh, for crying out loud! What is wrong with it? nothing phone? So the Nothing Phone is quite close to being the most environmental mass-produced handset that isn't purely a Fairphone trying to be fair. And what's interesting about the Fairphone is that it's supposedly modular. I don't know. And there have been ideas of modular phones, but they're not that great. So the idea would be that you upgrade the radio from a 4G to a 5G as and when um, you know, a 5G comes out and a 6G comes out. But the, the reason the Nothing Phone is, is more environmentally friendly, or certainly the one, I mean, everything I've seen from the packaging and even the casing and, and everything is, is, is using uh, recycled uh, materials as much as they can. But it's quite hard, isn't it, to make something that is that. Or, and from well, my point of view. There's, there's an know? argument to say that if... Um certain device manufacturers um, didn't degrade the battery uh, on the phone, then um, guess what? They would last longer. Or is that just a personal thing? Is that the one that Christian's got? It right? might well be. Yes. I, I, would, I would suggest they're the lead culprit. But when you say, I mean, a battery will naturally degrade over time. I've, I've not had a device that or a battery that that doesn't happen to. Um, I don't know whether they... Is there a conspiracy theory that a certain manufacturer 
I, I kind of like the fact that they give you a sort of an accurate view of the battery. And I think the battery is quite cheap to replace now. No? I mean, they've been forced to do it for not, it's not a ridiculous amount of money. Um, well, and then, it depends on your consumer. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, when I last checked, it was like £85, I think, here in the UK to get a brand new battery. Which and you can buy a new Android for. Well, yeah, but that's going to last le less time than the battery, isn't it? Um, and it's going to be made of cheese. And uh, I mean, the, the one redeeming feature I see of the <clears> iPhones <throat> is that, I mean, my last iPhone 12 I replaced literally a few months ago because one of the, you know, the, the cameras were failing and nobody could work out what it was. Mm. Um, but because they couldn't work out what it was and it wasn't showing up on the diagnostics, I got a very good rate for it. And the reason I got a very good rate for it is that it still looked impeccable three yeah. years on. And I honestly don't know any other manufacturer who makes a device apart from, you know, Carl who drops his like five times a day or my, uh, you know, and, and, and he's not the only one. There's quite a few people who do that. But if you keep it in a case with a cover on, I mean, it just lasts forever. And so, you know, changing the battery is something that you will have to do. And the only other phone that I've had in my hands that's not an iPhone that feels that great, or in fact, I'd like to say even slightly better, is the Nothing phone, or as they say up north, the Nottingham phone. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, even the glass on the back is like molded. It, it just feels amazing. And it's even, you know, th that slightly thing that Android do that it's got to be bigger. I don't understand that. It's like, you know, the phones are already big enough with a six inch screen they were big enough with a five inch and a four inch screen as far as i was concerned this you know having something that really doesn't fit in your pocket very easily but even given that it's it's fantastic but anyway so we we digress i think it's very hard to make our devices more environmentally friendly given the pressures that are out there but i don't know it's uh it's something that i think we need to look at a bit more I will get probably a fair phone and a nothing phone and, and run them side by side because I think it's it's important. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of this as um, we try and bring manufacturing back closer, which I think is possibly the another important feature. If we we ship all of the parts over to a certain part of the world to a place where people are making them cheaper not because it's just cheaper but because the the laws around humanity are much more lax uh and then you know wonder why our phones are not made in an environmental friendly manner well if you've sent them to a sweatshop to save money for a start <clears> then <throat> where on your agenda is things like environmental uh mm environmental factors so i think that's where it starts with no i mean I, i've seen that with one of the bike manufacturers that i'm an ambassador with when they brought the manufacturing back to italy not only does it have all the benefits that you'd assume but also uh yeah it, it's it's what comes with it is employing people fairer employment and people who have the ability the voice to say shouldn't we choose this manufacturer that is slightly greener rather than this one that not point two pence off of the price of every single one of them so having said that there is the reality and there's the impression and there was a survey of how many network operators was it 35 network operators of which many of them thought there were no green benefits of open run I mean, this is like, this is all, but there was a program for those of you who are not in the UK. What was the program called? Where this And the survey said, eh, uh, but it's, uh, they basically just asked people, do they think Open Run is green? And people in network operators, half of them said, I don't know. What, uh, I mean, that's a bit like, you know, going and asking 35 landlords, do you think you know, heat pumps work? <laughs> you put your finger in the air. Yeah. I think that's just apathy because they've got they've got no they've got no intention of, of looking at it or, or you know or playing playing along or, or or launching it, so they don't know. It's it's not on their 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 you know corporate radar, is it? Well, you yes. say that, but then there's another article from the same 
source that says is it 2025 is the year of open run the open run market is set for a second growth spurt starting 2025 driven by significant deployments by major network operators with the market on course to grow about 1 billion mm. in 2023 how is that news i think they must have got 20 2024 and 8 billion by 2029 i think the thing is is it's it's very difficult to know the green benefits of something if you're not measuring the green benefits of hmm. something so i can pretty much guarantee any operator that was in the first growth spurt of their kpis of open run i would be, i'd be willing to bet us a very nice dinner with some very nice wine that the environmental elements the environmental benefits of open run were not a kpi I don't know. Would, am I being? No, of course they won't be, will they? Well, that's, I don't know. I mean, I, I, was, I, I didn't know whether you're going to say, "Don't be so cynical, Christian." It's, of course no, they were. No, no, fact, they won't be. It was one of the primary. Yeah, it was one of the primary KPIs. Was is it greener? It isn't, and I think this is. <coughs> pardon me. This is why I chose the topic of the um, the handsets. I mean, it's it's, it's impossible to start trying to be green if you're not uh if you're not trying to incentivize green in any way right um yeah it's it's uh it's and i i uh, i don't really know how to tackle that it's 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 going to be difficult so we have all these targets to get to net zero but they just they just seem like superficial crap at the moment it's just like mm social corporate responsibility let's put a layer of slick on this i don't know if i'm being a little bit cynical but that's everywhere right i mean even people who are pretending to be uh to be green <coughs> so i think we'll try and reach out to uh some of the handset manufacturers who are trying to make greener devices because it, it it just isn't a it isn't a topic at the moment and i don't think it's even a topic in many areas right i mean it's it's even if you look at the ev industry we're trying to make the headline you know to change them to electric but they still weigh two tons and they still have a huge amount of batteries mm -hmm. and if you want to get something properly green you have to tackle it from from every angle and from the bottom up well that's it as you know i've got a, an ev and it it's it's green here because you charge it from the electricity and you know I'm with a green energy supplier, fine. But those those are all the things that that go with it that are not green, you know, such as the tires and, and everything else. Plus, of course, the manufacturer and the manufacturer and the you know, manufacturer of the batteries in particular with precious metals and things like that. So, yes, it's green it's green at point of use, but it's it's the whole supply chain beforehand that's probably far from. No, it's yeah. Are your tires yes. not green. Sorry, Are your tires not green. Oh. I can I should imagine tires and brake discs are possibly the <coughs> pardon me the least green yeah. one of the least green elements exactly of, of any vehicle. Um, yeah, that, it, that and um, it probably doesn't go with the pink um, color scheme on his car. Well, there you go. You see, it's it would clash. Hmm. But but like handsets and things now, um, it, it, you know, go back to the year dot. You used to have a retract uh, a replaceable battery. You used to take the battery off the back and put a, a larger power battery on, or you know, the old Nokia's and things like that. So they were, you know, they they didn't have buried onboard batteries like we you know we have today with our our um, smartphones. <coughs> Pardon me. Do you think there's a there's a step backwards you could do that to have a, a slot in? Uh, battery. I mean, there are so many. If you look at the, I know we're diversifying hugely, but power tools these days, you can get one battery that powers about, you know, a whole range of different power tools. Yeah. You know, do you think the uh, the, the handset industry will come round to that? You know, iPhone will have repla rechargeable batteries or replaceable batteries that will, will that will fit several of its models going backwards and forwards. I don't really think so because. You don't really need to replace your battery daily, do you? And I think 
the design originally of the battery like that was just because well i think a it would do you remember it would explode when you dropped it absorbing all the impact and not destroying your handset but if you're not replacing it every yeah i mean literally when do, uh, a battery degrades to the point that it needs changing after what a year two years depends how you charge it and yeah but it's uh, I think something that needs changing every year doesn't necessarily need to be as Nokia 6110, <coughs> pardon me, interchangeable. But it certainly doesn't need to be glued in and you need to take away, you know, dismantle uh, mm. something uh, over half an hour, which is what a lot of the devices do at the moment. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've looked at some of the more modern laptops and it's pretty easy to... Uh, basically take out the i mean the batteries are perfectly flat and, and serviceable i don't think it's that hard is it to make it a lot easier to get the the battery out but then a laptop is not something that you put in your pocket and do you remember the squeaks and noises that the the old phones would make and they're a lot bigger i don't think you know now we want this massive screen it has to be structurally more solid which means it probably has to be screwed together mm. <coughs> <coughs> pardon me I should mute really, shouldn't know when I do that. I'll, I'll press the mute button on the second one. There's been a lot going on to the point that uh, I think I'm almost losing my, my voice. But they, they, it is one of the things, and, and, and I think they need to be used as services as well, because part of the, I mean, £85, we say flippantly, sounds quite good, and we were dismissing an $85 handset. But the reality is that for a lot of people, the, the handset is $85. And if that's the case, the battery obviously isn't that much, mm. and we should uh, we there should be more user serviceable, uh, definitely. I think I don't think we'll get to the point where we, who was it who made the modular phone? I believe it was a Google idea, wasn't it? Do you remember this? No? Is it just no. me? Yeah, don't recall. I don't either. But uh, and it is it hasn't sort of. I don't know if you've looked at the design of the iPhone. They sort of seem to circulate, but for now, that the the case seems to be identical. Apart from they make one curvy, and then the next year they make it straight, and then they make it curvy again the year afterward. But it seems like there's a lot of... For years now, they've been the same size. And mm. you know, this year's iPhone 15 seems to be like last year's iPhone 14 Pro just with a few tweaks upgraded cameras and things really they they, you know, they become a, a, a <coughs> that's thing upgraded lenses and things isn't it that's um so when the point that failed in my last uh iphone was the camera or the camera software or something to do with the camera and they were going to replace the camera for 300 pounds was it may have been 200 pounds i can't remember if it was 199 or 299 <laughs> it was enough for me to decide not to do it especially because they said we can't guarantee not not from a bad point of view but we can't guarantee this will actually yeah. fix it if it's a software issue obviously and the point is is that you, know, you start adding these things up but it is essentially when i looked it up it is a very simple thing to replace and yeah i think we probably can go to more modular I know it makes their business model of the only reason I now upgrade. I know at least twice I've upgraded my iPhone going, well, it's a better camera. <laughs> but yep. I mean, if they are selling a camera for 100, 200, then is there a, is there a way to make more money from, from the upgrades? I personally think that you should you know if you, if you, the big problem with technology is it's built in obsolescence and the fact that you don't buy because you think there's going to be a better one tomorrow, right? And yeah. the only way to get around that and be green at the same time is to allow people to get the better version anyway. And so the two probably go hand in hand. So, yeah, I mean, we've done a long circle to come back to the same thing, but they should be more modular, really, I think, is, is going to be the starting point, isn't it? Yeah. And that's... Yeah essentially what open ran is right i mean you're supposed to be able to swap this piece of hardware for that piece of hardware yeah. and obviously this is a very dense compressed uh almost to the point of uh i forget the name of the uh the person in uh in sony who's 
through a watermelon in a bucket of water, and if bubbles came out, it wasn't small enough. But I think that we're there now, aren't we? With the, with handsets, there isn't very much space left inside them. Um, so they aren't going to always be as consumer uh, fixable as, as as we would like. But you can see here, every I mean, in in London, there's a camera, there's a phone replacement pace in every corner. <coughs> Pardon me. And the only reason I don't use them is because the screens that they put in and the batteries that they put in don't seem to be as good as the originals, even though they look mm. like it. But if we could get access to the originals and you don't have to take it to the Apple store, which, you know, if you are in London, is quite close. But if you're not in a major city of a major town, then it is quite far. Yeah. So, yes, I think we have done that one to death. Smartphones are up, though. The sales are up. Nothing really. What was it? The new figures are quite astounding. <coughs> There's... <coughs> Has anyone got that? The so Samsung has pipped. Surprise, surprise! Apple from the top spot again, and the biggest gains are Xiaomi and Transion. <coughs> Who are well, it Doesn't surprise me because it's still, in terms of the the, the global market. Um, you know, non-smartphones, want a better phrase, are the majority of phones. So over time, the addressable market is still huge. Um, and if they, be, if they hit the right price point, uh, and I think it is very price elastic, the number of smartphones sold will will, will clearly increase. I would, I would suspect uh, there's still not, even though there's a, a huge percentage of the population global population that's not got a, a connectivity at all i think um from from the addressable market point of view it's quite logical <laughs> you know I, I think the whole market's not expanding very much but the number of, of uh there'll be a, there'll be a contra the number of smartphones will equally decline in non-smartphones would be money. that's a good point i i hadn't uh I had made what is possibly a, a, a terrible assumption that all phones are smartphones, but you're probably right. It's still, no, still a minority. Mm. I've got a figure off the top of my head, it's still a minority. That's interesting. I'd love to see what the split is of that. Um, yeah, I think it's 30% globally of, of phones are smartphones. Is that all? It's low. It's, it's, it's a lot lower than you think. And what? how do they define smart? Do you know? Well, I, I guess the ability, to, I, I don't, if, if, if the honest answer, but my view would be on, um, you know, the ability to do complex apps and processing mm. power. You can ask it a question. Is it, if, it, if it's got a Siri or the equivalent on it. Well, are you a smartphone? It's got, it's it got a large answer, screen. It's not. It's, it's probably got a large screen and a, lo a poor battery life, so that's a smartphone, eh? <laughs> which is caused by the apps. Is, uh, is, uh... Yeah, yeah. I used to love that when people said, "Oh, the, the BlackBerry battery lasts forever." It's like yeah, cause you can't do anything with it. It's just, hmm. I, I think one of the stats, just to drag us back a little bit, so a point you made earlier on in the, in the piece um, about open RAM forecasts to. Um, hmm net increase i mean this is in the context of, of, of the environment of all the networks saying they've done the 5g rollouts and therefore their capex is reducing so i think even if it's a small increase the fact it's an increase when you look at it as a percentage of the total capex of the market it's probably quite a quite a significant increase in spend uh, on open run um and i think therefore the adoption of the modular uh, approach mm. across to use your phrase christian across telco is um i think it's an irreversible trend i'm seeing a lot of stuff saying uh all, all around it, as it worked is the jury still out i think that's those figures on their own um tell me it's um it's, it's rubbish um we've got a we've got we've got a question um of smartphones being cost driven um 
I think just to answer that one specifically, I think all handsets clearly at the bot the lower the price point, um, you know, the, the, the greater the volume of sales, the price elastic. There's very few consumers, even on a what's called a um, tongue in cheek, a free phone on, a, on an 18 month, two year plan. Um, mm. And you, and you pay for that. I know North America's slightly different model um, in terms of you have two plans and that one is the phone. So it's obvious. But in Europe, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, most plans are, are inclusive. And you, you, know, you may well pay, say, in the UK, you'll pay £15 a month for a SIM free, depending on what volume of data you want. And it's 40, 50, 60, sometimes higher than that. So the, the, the penetrate a lot of the penetration at the higher end on finance plans um but is it cost driven absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. to answer your question you're on mute christian which is the enemy of all of these uh green initiatives isn't it you have to at some point yep uh, you can't go and make your house solar without spending some money no indeed but you have to, and I think this is the thing. You have to start somewhere, right? Um, and so I think the capex is, is prohibitive. I mean, you know, I, I could afford to go out and buy a SIM-free iPhone um, tomorrow, but I won't because I don't think it's value for money. But um, you know, I, I may well consider a finance plan for it. Um, but I, you know, you can't base the market on your own personal projection. So I think, particularly when you're overseas, um, you know, price points if you're getting some are as low as. 20 US dollars for a handset. I mean, that was, that's uh, for that particular market, it's not even a, a, a decision. I think you. Uh, but I, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of people are in some markets, about 80% of people are buying their handsets outright. And I think that's because they don't want to be dependent. And that part of the market possibly isn't cost driven. They don't want to be dependent on getting the new device when their network when their network operator decides they can have it they want to be able to have it when they decide they can have it but and, and, I, and I get but from my understanding in the stats um the majority of that disproportionately is android um i think it's 90 plus percent is android because of the actual uh, price point so if you're at 100 us dollars for a price point yeah that's uh, for, for you know if you have the disposable income it's not it's a you know it's a thought uh, conscious decision process, but if I'm suddenly having to spend a thousand plus dollars on the latest iPhone, that excludes a lot of the market. Yeah, a SIM three device. It does, but I don't think we need to automatically assume that each uh, that the cheapest uh, phones are Androids because have you seen the price of some of the flip phones? They're about two. They're about double. <laughs> At two thousand pounds, it's well, quite exactly. to have your uh, screen fold in the middle where it'll ultimately fail. But I think where I was going with that point is that, uh, and going off of Liv's comment of cost driven, is that if you are in a situation where you will buy your handset direct from the manufacturer or from whatever channel, because you want to be in control of when you have it and what device you have and when mm -hmm. then you are a perfect candidate for uh, trying to lead the green choice of paying a little bit more for something that is a little bit more environmentally friendly and so i think for the next one we should try and find some stats on this shouldn't we uh, and see just how many people do i i heard some figures that in some markets 80 percent of the handsets are bought directly, um, whereas in more restrictive markets or more traditional markets, it was as low as 40%. Yeah. You're struggling a little bit there, aren't you? Yeah, it's uh, long hours and talking too much. <laughs> but well, we've said to it. It's uh, yeah. It's not going to get it's not going to get better quicker from here, is it? But, uh, but anyway, I think right. on that point we've got some stats and figures to bring to the next one. And, and, and I think one of the things we need to 
um, probably just highlight over the next few weeks that we'll be discussing and doing some um, video of um, private networks and what we're doing in that space. Um, I guess to to reiterate, we've been today and we're looking at a site where we're going to build um, and test some some private networks. So we'll be able to do we'll be able to web, webinar from there, and I'm quite looking forward to that. A especially, lot. yeah. Well, you you uh, you especially uh, love the fact that a helicopter landed there whilst we were there. Yeah, that's that's the private taxi that we've ordered. I wish. Mm, nice. I'll, I'll definitely have to go on mute. Uh, or we'll definitely have to go on mute when that happens. <laughs> and I think well, on that, that note, happens. yeah. Until we didn't, uh, and apologies, we didn't do the Bond thing. Um, even though this is episode double zero seven, <laughs> some things you just can't. Uh... <laughs> And I, and I don't think uh, whilst you're coughing and uh, whilst you're coughing and wheezing, you can't really. Uh, it's not the best. Uh, it's not the best way to try and pull off a bond uh, mm. a bond episode, is it? Yeah. We'll have to do. Uh, have but to yeah, do, uh, on that note, I think. Thank you for everyone's time. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.